Hello everyone, my name is Jaybird and welcome back to Eris. So today, in this episode, we're gonna finally finish off uh, Evra. That sounds like we're gonna kill her. But we're gonna finish off doing Evra's, all Evra's uh, endings with uh, the last ending, which is actually, um, this ending is actually hidden, I think. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a hidden ending actually. It's not. But anyways, this is this. So we're supposed to load save file two. And uh, yep. We'll just keep skipping, 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 skipping. We're just gonna keep skipping. All right. So this one is stay silent for now. This ev ending will be a iris, I think that's what it is. Shaking my head, yeah, it's a iris. Uh, shaking my head, I decide to go with the flow and keep the truth a secret for now. Evra has much more context than I do about what's going on, so if she's decided it's best to keep my awareness a secret, I should oblige her. The, th the thought, however, is depressingly short-lived. An outburst from one of the guildmates closest to me makes my decision moot. Hmm. Boop do 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 do. Keep on skipping. Keep on skipping. Keep on skipping till we get an option. <laughs> till we get an option. Uh, leaves things be. I shouldn't offend the king. The king. Alright. This is what I decide not to say anything. If anything, anything I could possibly say may only end up hurting the king's opinion of both Evra and me. For now at least, it doesn't look like she's offending me offended him or anything. It's probably best to leave things like this instead of making things worse under false pretense of pretensions of grandeur. In a moment of rare dictotomy between our thoughts, however, Hever speaks up with the question that I almost asked but failed to, and I have to fight to hold in a groan, although I have to admit I'm secretly more than pleased. Can my friend Elia stay with me? I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide from her. The king laughs once more, but not with humor. Of course not. If you think you have a choice in the matter, you're a great, far greater a fool than I already thought you were. Evra's nod is so tiny that it's barely noticeable, and I see her bottom lip trembling. I have to clench my hand into my fist by my side to resist reaching out to draw her into a comforting hug and protect her from the king. I exhale through a narrow slit in my closed lips. Good luck. See you later, Evra. Give her. Okay, we're just gonna keep on skipping. Just gonna keep on skipping. Hurt it, er. Hit it, do. Aww. Still love that scene. We're just gonna keep on skipping. The tie between worlds must be severed. This is what we have to say. I'm not willing to accept anything less than that. I, I Ever shakes her head and smiles at me sadly, reaching out to squeeze my hands. It's okay, Elia, I understand. My time here has been like a dream, but if my presence here is a result of attempts of potentially wiping out an entire population of people, that's not fun anymore. That's not a break from reality, that's a nightmare. We quiet down after a while Ever speaks up with the weakest shrug I've ever seen in my life. N now, if that's it for now, come on. Ever holds out her hands, her expression is uncharacteristically tense and apologetic, and my stomach lurches at the sight of it. Blah, 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 uh, we're supposed to say the king needs to learn a lesson. The king needs to learn a lesson. I avert my gaze and sigh. Really, I can't but thank you. 
expression clouds over and I wonder if she's worried that she's not qualified to speak considering the fact that she's not really an Aryan. I'm about to speak up and reassure her, but she vanishes into the crowd, continuing to refuse requests to speak all the while. Eventually, the guild members present, present decide near unanimously that the king must be reta retaliated against somehow, although there remain disagreements about how we try to pull it up. Only then does Ever reappear, giving me a curt apology for the disappearance with a weak smile. The focus switches from not mo from motivational speeches and arguments about what to do about the king to a discussion of tactics, a discussion of how exactly to scare him into changing his mind. Near me, I see Lyle, s Lyle stiffen and cup their forehead with their palm in frustration. I reach out to reassure them, but they don't seem to see me as they back away to the corner of the dor dorm closet. Dorm closet closest to the doors outside. Oh, okay. As the day goes on, the, the guild meeting continues, and as emotionally charged as it is haphazard and marked by our inexperienced. Inexperienced, each and every one of us are as confused and immature as the next, but also as determined and hopeful. I yawn and sigh as the meeting finally draws to a close. Our plans for a revolt outlined with, this, with surprisingly solid planning and organization no longer a bare bones combination of scattered fruitless ideas. I stretch my back stiff from the hours of awkwardly standing then sitting around an overly crowded hall with too many excitable people. I turn to Evra to, about to ask her if she wants to go on wine at the tavern but she's deathly pale as if sh from shock and dread and my words catch my throat. Are you... are you alright, Evera? You've been looking really out of it today. She tries to smile at me, but it comes out a half-worried scowl. Confused, I take a step back. Yeah, I'm fine. Great. You don't need to worry about me. I just... the more I think about it, the more nervous I get, you know? I never expected to be part of a revolt against the king, of all things. It's just that... I feel like the longer I hang out with you guys and pretend to be, well, pretend to be like you guys, the more I find myself entangled in increasingly escalating debacles. Honestly, the biggest question in my mind right now is if, is, isn't if things will only get worse, it's when things will get worse and what I will have to do, deal with next. Have to deal with next. Something about her phrasing unnerves me even more than it makes me worry about her. Although I can't d pinpoint what or why, I decide to ignore the feeling. Yeah, I understand. I'm a bit surprised by the turn of events, too. Baker's daughter one day, potential writer the next. How people change, huh? Yes, yes, yeah, for sure. Reaching out, I try to squeeze her hand reassuringly, but she squirms away. Sorry, now's not... I'm too nervous for company, I think. I'll be in a better mood soon. Uh, see you tomorrow? Even as I nod, I grimace at her sudden distance from me. With a shake of the head, however, I decide to give her the benefit of the doubt. I wave her goodbye with an awkward smile. Teddy tilts her head and frowns before jumping up to pat me on my head. One pat per hop. There, there. There, there. What's with Everett today, anyway? She isn't herself. I almost tell her that Ever is acting too much like herself, like her old self, before she grew closer to the rest of us vassals, but think better of it. Maybe if I don't acknowledge her sudden shift in behavior, it'll be as if it never happened, and things will be back to normal again tomorrow. I'm sure it's nothing. We don't... Why don't we go back home and sleep, Teddy? My dog's, like, scratching at my door. Oh, no. Oh, mother of souls, yes, I've been bored out of my mind. Politics has never been for me. I chuckle to myself as I walk with her outside and back home. Oh yeah, okay, we can just skip all this. Oh, Ever tries to wink at me, but it looks like she's grimacing. I don't think I'll ever be, but it's not like we can stop these people, and I guess it'd be wrong of me to back out at the last minute. I hesitate. I hesitate! Her words are one of the key reasons why I, why all of us here, even the minority of us who are iffy about the revolt in the first place, have agreed to help out to the end, no matter what, no, no matter the potential consequences or chances of failures. However, her voice sounds irked rather than fearful or nervous, and I can't help but feel a bit strange that she's making no effort to conceal her anxieties to help keep the, the, the atmosphere light. 
Everywhere around us, all our guildmates are just as tense as we are, but they're all fooling around, even as they duelers otherwise prepare for the riot, and pretending to be excited and, have, and to be having fun. That's what's expected at a time like this, isn't it? At a time like this, isn't it? Putting aside my doubts about her, yet again I smile and open my mouth while I'm about to crack a joke, but she cuts me off by spitting out four words she doesn't particularly seem to care about. Good luck to us. I knit my brows, wondering why she suddenly changed so much. I want to ask her if she's alright, but she shrugs and turns away, and I realize the potential moment has passed. If I'll try to ask now, she'll probably continue to brush me off. Reluctantly, I wish her good luck back, but I'm unable to bring myself to say anything else. Teddy pops besides me, confused by her sudden discord, but it seems to chalk Everett's aloofness to nervousness, as she doesn't make any effort to snap at her for behaving distantly or anything. While we continue waiting for the revolt to begin, Teddy and I engage in meaningless talk, small talk meant to keep us distracted from just how daunting our goals feel. As our guildmates trickle into the forest closest to the castle, I can't help but gasp. I never expected so many people to join the cause, but everyone had been shaken in some way or the other by the realization about the lack of control over their own bodies, and we wouldn't have become warriors in the first place if we hadn't been at least a little pro proactive. The minority who made it to the guild meetings had all gathered up all their friends who hadn't, letting them in on the plans and arguing with them to convince them to join the cause. In fact, there are so many of us here today that were probably overprepared. We hadn't really expected much resistance in the castle anyway. There was a reason we picked it today. Ever seems to have disappeared into the sea of people. Lyle, I have to go. Why? There's so many of them. One missing person won't necessarily hurt the cause, right? They're technically right. Why do I feel the need to stick with our guildmates' plan? Uh, I'm supposed to say I completely agree with the goal. Alright. We can just skip all this. Uh, I attempt to search through the crowd forever, but to no avail. Sensing my worry forever, Teddy nudges me in the side, a grin on her face as she attempts to distract me. Aelia, this is really exciting! Much more fun than our dungeon crawling. We should start riots more often. Don't be silly, Teddy. I'm not being silly. Look, everyone is in such high spirits. I'm not the only one who finds this awesome. Okay. What's wrong, Aelia? You look so upset. Stop being such a worry wart for once, won't you? Look, everyone knows we are going to succeed. Have a little more faith in us. I begin to nibble on my lip, uncertain how to explain the odd feeling settling deep in my belly. That's the problem, Teddy. I don't know how to explain this, but I have a bad feeling about this. What do you mean? Are you sure you aren't just being your usual silly self? I pause, trying to take a deep breath to calm my nerves, but the stone of dread inside me merely grows larger. I don't know. Something just doesn't feel right. I'm sure everything will be fine. Look, they're going to surrender as soon as they see my majestic, powerful... Out of nowhere! La, 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 la. My eyes flutter and shh. My eyes flutter shut in horror as realization slowly dawns on me. It was a trap. The king knew we were going to make a move against him and lured us in by letting us believe that General Eric has left the capital and that the security at the castle is weakened. How did he know? How did he find us out? How did he find out? Who told the king? Do we have a moment of this? I hate it when you're right, Elia. I know, I hate it too. But I glance at the brave warriors who were remaining to fight off the army as royal soldiers donned in red and black armor begin to flood in from every direction. I catch a glimpse of familiar strawberry blonde hair in a sphere among the small group and I shake off Teddy's paw, veering towards them instead. Elia, no! What are you doing?! Evera's there! We can't just leave her behind! Elia, it's a lost cause! We can't win against a whole army! Go! Get yourself to a safe place! I'll be fine! Ignoring Teddy's screams, I rush towards Evera, who seems surprised and horrified to see me. Elia, what are you doing? Run! We'll buy time for the rest of you to escape. Escape! I'm not leaving you. Sliding in position next to her, I draw my sword. 
crouching to prepare for that for, for, for battle. You idiot! No! Just go! I said I'm not going anywhere. Not without you. How touching. We can just keep on skipping on. Reluctant to depart without at least hearing an apology from Lyle, I open my mouth to protest, but then I freeze at something I never thought I'd hear. The sound of Evra sobbing. Evra? Realizing that Evra has curled up into a ball on the ground, her face hiding in her palms, I, I fall to my knees beside her, confusion and worry blossoming in my blossoming in my chest. Evra, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Please talk to me. Too much. This is all too much. None of this is real. It can't be real. I don't believe this is real. Evra? I reach out to touch her in concern, but she jerks back at my touch as though I burnt her, a loud gasp escaping her mouth. Evra! I tried to grab her arm, but she dodges to the side nimbly. By the time I manage to get to my feet, Evra has already ran off, heading into the forest alone. Ah, achievement unlocked! A iris. Oh, panting. This is the ending. Panting, I dash after Evra, shouting for her to wait. Hey, hey, Evra, where are you going without me? Evra? She doesn't give us so much as a glance, though she does speak up as she continues walking away after we prompt her enough times. You know, I've been thinking about it, and I realized what I should have known how long. All of this is obviously just an incredibly thorough hoax. W what? Evra, what are you talking about? Stop walking away and explain what you mean! She continues on, but her words are more a ramble of for herself as she organizes or convinces herself to believe her own thoughts than an, ex than an explanation for me. I feel like such a moron for getting swindled by artificially intelligent people so easily. It's like I became one of the very people I've laughed at and pro profited from for so long. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. I'm actually going to take a screenshot of this just for the thumbnail. Just in case I don't have a nice screenshot for the thumbnail. Because cause sometimes just there just isn't anything and it makes me sad. So I'm just going to screenshot this. I hope there's a nice image for me to s capture. But no, sometimes it's like, no, you don't get the luxury. And I'm just like, okay. Oh, I tried. But this is interesting. It's just like you seem so real. All of you did. Mother of souls, what do you mean? Everything kept escalating and escalating until frankly it all just felt like an obvious farce. So I contacted the, so I contacted the devs. The what? The people who made you. Nobody made me, Evra. You said yourself that the code or whatever trying tying you to us didn't look right. That's where you're wrong. The devs chuckled when I told them about you guys. Said they'd made a special event specifically for the people who managed to convince themselves the world was real. The riots, the revolutions, it was all fake. At first I was relieved, and then I was embarrassed for having fallen for it so completely. Think about it. Sorry, no, I suppose you can't think, not like I can. There's a world out there ridiculously similar to ours, only with magic, and we can only access it via, ga via a game? We can't take a rocket there, and we can't find a magical port portal there. We have literally no way of accessing this magical place, except through playing a game. Somehow there's an entire world filled with rich resources and instead of declaring war against them for some flimsy reason or another or finding another way to convince people to involve themselves in the world, the government makes people think they're playing a game set in an artificial realm? How does that make a look of sense? Don't get me wrong, obviously I think aliens exist. The universe is too big for them not to. But the aliens sure as hell won't look or think or talk like us, and if we manage to make contact with them, it's not going to be so... so conveniently. And as for the code, 
Magic looking code I couldn't understand? <laughs> More like I just wasn't smart enough to decrypt it. My cockiness was my greatest downfall, I think. It's always been, although most of the time it's also been justified. The specialized event about overthrowing the government and breaking ties or whatever. Man, that was a genius touch. I can't praise the devs enough. Evera? At that, Ever finally turns around, her eyes pooling with tears that she speedily brushes away. Y you're kidding, right? It was really fun while it lasted, I Alia, I while I believed you were real. But, well, it's time to wake up now. The seriousness of her voice shuts me up, proving to me how seri serious she is. I should start associating with real people, not... Not AI, and, s and at the very least, I need to stop dilu diluting myself. I won't stop playing this game, of course. It's way too highly, high, it's way too high quality for that, and everything has been incredible. But it's time for me to start retreating every, for for me to start treating everyone like what they are, what they, what you are, fakes, imitations of us. Goodbye, Alia. With that, Ever falls limp. When she gets up again, her expression is completely different and reminds me of a meek, sh meek sheep's. A Alia, what's wrong? E Evra, I I'm sorry. I have to go. I stumble back, turn around, and begin running blindly into the forest. All I want to do is find a safe spot so I can curl up and cry and cry and cry for the loss of the riot against the king, and more importantly. The perhaps permanent loss of the friend I've grown to love it like my own sister. Wow. I'm guessing that was his sad ending. Because they're still playing the sad music. Okay. Wow. Wow, that was, uh... That was interesting. So next next one I want to do is Kylan. So we're going to do Kylan. So that would be interest that's going to be fun. But um if you guys enjoyed this episode of Eris, leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Bye-bye.